I have been using my M1 Mac as my only computer for over a week now and it's currently deadline season for me so I've got a lot of university work that I've been cracking on with in the library and at home and I've been working really long hours to try and get this work done and I've really been counting on the M1 MacBook Air running all my applications that I need reliably and consistently and I must admit I've been completely blown away by the performance of this laptop and I'm going to show you how great it is. Before I sort of crack on and tell you how great this computer is, I've got one negative thing just to sort of quickly say and I think this problem has been solved anyway. I found that when I had too many applications running for Rosetta they would all crash so if I had Chrome, Word and Outlook running on my MacBook they would all just suddenly crash However, there has since been a software update. I haven't experienced this issue again, so I'm pretty sure it's completely solved now. And if you were to go out and buy an M1 Mac, all you gotta do is just update it to the latest version and it'll work great. I'll quickly explain to you what my setup is. When I'm in the library, I'm just using my M1 Mac as is. And then when I'm working from home, I've got it in clamshell mode, attached to a USB-C dongle, and then that's connected to my monitor, my keyboard, and my mouse, and a memory stick. That's my sort of work from home setup. So first of all, I am recording the screen using QuickTime Player. So this is going to be using a little bit more CPU usage than normal if you're just doing productivity tasks, as it's unlikely that you're also recording the screen normally. I'm also gonna keep open in the background Microsoft Outlook, Microsoft Teams and Spotify. These are all applications that I would keep open in the background when I'm doing productivity tasks. Firstly, I'm going to open up a few Microsoft Word documents from university and show just how easily it flies through this. I now have 16 Word documents open and these all vary in size but it's still a lot of documents open at any one time and more than I'd normally have open at one time and you can see that the computer really doesn't struggle and most of the CPU usage is still idle and I'm able to glide through these documents and just easily make edits when I need to and it's not a problem so if your workflow is mainly Microsoft Word based you won't have an issue at all. Next I'm going to open up a load of PDF files so when I'm doing university work I'm constantly referring to different PDF files that I have downloaded so I have 17 PDF files open these all vary in size but I know that one of these is an entire book that's 170 pages and mostly they're around 30 plus pages academic papers and the Mac absolutely glides through this. I'm easily able to highlight stuff and add comments and it's really not a problem. So again, if you're gonna have a lot of PDFs open, it doesn't, it's not even a problem at all. Funnily enough, Microsoft Excel was something that my Intel MacBook Pro really struggled with. And I would go as far to say that Excel was completely unusable on my Intel MacBook Pro. So I have downloaded a CSV file, which is about 51.5 megabytes from a US government website. Obviously 51.5 megabytes doesn't sound like much, but for a spreadsheet file, it's a massive file and it's about 300,000 rows. Admittedly, it took a while to fully open the document, but now I'm able to input new data, add pivot tables, edit cells, and it really isn't a struggle. I think most Excel workflows, this will be able to handle it great. And even though Excel isn't optimized for ARM yet, it still works really well on the Mac. So when there is an optimized version, Excel is gonna work absolutely fantastically. Safari obviously works really, really great as it's optimized for this Mac. So I'm gonna open up a few standard social media applications that I just tend to sort of have open in the background whenever I'm doing university work. And I'm also gonna play a YouTube video. So sometimes I'll be listening to a video whilst I'm doing work. So now I've got open a few social media tabs and YouTube and stuff, and I can easily add a ton more tabs. So I use ResearchGate for university, and I tend to have a lot of these tabs open at any one time, so I can flip between different articles. One of my last projects was on CSR, so that's why CSR is the first thing that sort of came to mind, and that's why I'm Googling it. It really doesn't make the computer struggle, and I'm able to flip between two dozen tabs without any sort of struggle. I do have a friend who tends to keep open like 50 tabs at a time whenever we're doing university work, but I, I never personally do that. And for me, this amount of tabs works absolutely easy on this Mac. 
One website that would really slow down my Intel Mac was Cite This For Me. Whenever I'd use it, I would always get a notification on my Mac saying that this web page was reducing the responsiveness of it. So I'm going to quickly just add a few references using Cite This For Me. And on my Intel Mac, I would have really started to struggle. The fans would have kicked on and it would have been getting hot. And you can just see here that it absolutely glides through Cite This For Me and it's not a problem. I don't tend to use Chrome for anything other than my MetaMask wallet, but I can show you that this actually does still work well on the M1 MacBook Air. I'm opening up a load of tabs, I can play a YouTube video, and then I can also do my research that I'd be doing for university, going Googling sources, and it really does work very well. Teams and Outlook work well in the background and it's not a problem at all. I've had many Teams lectures and on my Mac it's been completely fine. I've also had several Zoom lectures with breakout rooms and adding backgrounds and all of that stuff and it just really does handle Zoom very well. I hope this sort of benchmark test was useful for you. If your workflow is really similar to what I'm doing here, if I'm being honest, I think you could save money and just buy the base M1 Mac. I know a lot of people will say, buy 16 gig of RAM, buy the eight core GPU, which if you can afford it, do it, why not? I mean, you'll have a better computer and it'll probably last a little bit longer. If you can't really afford to slash out the extra bit of money, like I couldn't, I wouldn't worry too much because this computer is an absolute beast and I love it. Thank you for watching, catch you again, all the best.